Hey, what do you say weekend warriors? Welcome back. Today we're gonna smoke some corned beef. It's that time of year where this stuff goes on sale. I'm using my vertical offset smoker today. About 20 minutes ago, I started to get this fired up. The way I do that, I'll take a little charcoal chimney with some lump charcoal. On top of that, I'm gonna put some of these B&B &B competition char logs on there. I like these. And once those get going, I'm gonna start adding on some smaller splits of cherry wood. I really, really like cherry on corned beef. I think it tastes delicious. And we're gonna be smoking today anywhere between 275 degrees Fahrenheit and 300 degrees Fahrenheit. That might seem a little bit high for some people, but you can still get great smoke flavor cooking at those higher temperatures. And the benefit of cooking at the higher temperature is it cooks faster. And there's a couple things I want you to know. Just because I'm using this does not mean you can't do it in your pellet smoker. It doesn't mean you can't do it in your Weber kettle or your Weber Smoky Mountain. We're cooking by a pit temperature. So as long as you can get it to 275 degrees Fahrenheit, for example, you're good to go. You can follow along and get the same results that I'm going to in this video. The second thing is the focus of today is not how to make a corned beef or a pastrami from scratch. I've actually already done that. I'll leave a link up in the iCard. It's a lot of fun to make it from scratch, but it's a lot of work. It's a several day process. These here are two corned beef flats. These are the kinds that you get that are prepared for you at the store. They're each about four and a half pounds a piece. And what I've done is rinsed them off really good with cold water. And then what I like to do is put them in a tub of cold water for a minimum of four hours. If you don't do it, it's gonna be very, very salty. I learned that mistake the hard way the first time I ever tried to smoke a corned beef. It'll make for one of the worst nights of your life trying to sleep with a dry mouth. You'll be chugging water all night. And before we proceed any further, I've had people say, well, isn't a smoked corned beef just a pastrami? Eh, not quite. So the difference is in the rub you put on them. And that's why I'm doing two different versions today. I'm gonna show you how I do a regular smoked corned beef, and then I'm gonna show you how to do a pastrami. The rub recipe is adapted from Meathead from amazingribs.com. I'm gonna start with one tablespoon of ground coriander. Now Meathead's is a little bit different. He's using whole coriander that he's ground up into a more coarse grind. I'm using the powdered stuff. Tablespoon of coarse grind black pepper. Teaspoon of garlic powder. Tablespoon of ground mustard. I'm using Coleman's, a teaspoon of onion powder, about a tablespoon of brown sugar. And then this last one is optional and it is not traditional. Uh, it's chipotle powder. I like to add a little bit more heat to mine. So that's a teaspoon of that. And then mix it up. Your hands make the best mixer, especially with that brown sugar in there. You wanna get those clumps broken down. And for the regular smoked corned beef, I'm just gonna use the seasoning packets that come with it, that's it. So the rubs are ready to go. Now what we're gonna do is take these out of the water. I've got some gloves on. And the best thing to do is just pat them dry lightly with some paper towels. You wanna leave a little bit of moisture behind to give our rub something to stick to. Otherwise you could use some yellow mustard if you wanted. Okay, so this one's gonna be our pastrami. I'm gonna season the uh, non-fat cap side first because we're gonna smoke this fat cap up today. And I'll just lightly spread it out. Okay, and so here's our fat cap side. If you wanted to trim some of this off, you could. I'm just gonna leave it. It's really not that much. And because this is the brisket flat, this is the drier side of the brisket. The brisket point is the fattier side and juicier. So we're gonna use this fat here to our advantage. And I'll go ahead and just dump the rest of the rub on. Get that spread out. And now let's take a look at our regular corned beef one. What I've noticed on this fat cap is there's some uh, discoloration on that fat. And I don't want that, so I'm going to see what happens here if I trim a little bit off. Yeah. Just go ahead and get rid of that. Okay, then there's the uh, seasoning pack with your traditional corned beef seasonings. We're gonna get this on here. I'm just gonna go light. 
get this side. All right, so we are ready to go in the smoker. Let's do it. All right, so before I open the door, we are at, right now, sitting around 275 degrees Fahrenheit, which is perfect. Got that cherry wood going, nice clean smoke, which means you almost can't see it at all. That's what you want. Let's get this door open. And I'll just show you a couple things here. So on this very bottom rack, I have two pans of water. This really helps balance out the smoker. So if you've watched me for any period of time, I like using the water tray in my pellet smoker too. I think there's a lot of good benefits to using it. Push that back in. I'm gonna go right about on this middle rack. We'll put our corned beef right here. Pastrami right there. Let's get this closed up. All right, so what we're gonna do today, I wanna get about four hours of direct smoke time on this meat. We're gonna smoke it, and then we're gonna braise it or steam it to help get it real tender in the end. We'll probably take this up to around 185 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe all the way up to 200, we'll see. Whenever it gets real nice and tender, I want to make some sandwiches with that pastrami. So I'll come back in about two hours to check on it. We'll show you how it's looking and then we'll go from there. I can't wait. And we just hit the two hour mark. Let's get this door open and check on our little friends here. So get this open. Oh yeah, that's looking real nice. So this one here is our pastrami. This is our regular corned beef. Let's do a little temperature check on these guys. So he's going a little bit quicker than I thought. He's at 171 degrees Fahrenheit. And our pastrami, let's see how he's doing. He's at about 147 Fahrenheit. So what I'm thinking, I'm gonna let this guy go about another hour and then I'm gonna put it in a foil pan and let it uh, cook in its own juices. And we'll, we'll see how this guy's doing in another hour. So we'll be back in one hour and give you an update. And we are at hour number three. I wish you guys could smell this out here. That pastrami, I mean, it smells like a restaurant. Plus the cherry wood, it's unbelievable. So three hours in, I think we're gonna take our corned beef out. So here's what we do. This guy goes in, just like that. Just a little bit of water to help that steaming process start. And now would be a good time if you wanted uh, maybe a bigger pan. You could put some carrots, some potatoes in there, get those cooking, maybe some cabbage. I have videos on how to do that. And I'm gonna take the rest of the seasoning pack, dump it in the water for some extra flavor. Let's just check our pastrami. It's about 155, so I think in about another hour, I'm gonna do the same thing with this guy. Wrap this tightly in foil. I'm just gonna go one rack above. Like that. Move him to the center. Let it keep cooking. So in one hour, I'm gonna wrap up that pastrami, do the same thing. By the time I come back, I'm gonna be making sandwiches. So basically that process is, we're gonna let these cook until they're probe tender, somewhere around 189, all the way up to 202 degrees Fahrenheit, they'll get tender. I don't want it to fall apart like brisket. I want it to have a little pull to it, but that's up to you, your house, your rules. Cook it how long you want and then we'll let it rest and I'll slice it up and put it on a sandwich. So we will be back when it's sandwich time. 
And here we are. Check out that pastrami, guys. So four hours in the smoke for this guy, then two hours wrapped up in this foil pan. Just like with my corned beef, I put a little bit of a water base in there to get it started uh, steaming. And then all those juices down there, I like to save those. Once I slice this open, I, I put it back in the juice. Ideally, you want to let this uh, get cold, refrigerate overnight. It's much easier to slice cold than it is hot, but I can't wait that long. I've got to try it now. So this has only been resting about 20 minutes. It's still going to be piping hot. But I'm going to get it over onto the cutting board, and I'm going to start slicing some of this for you. So like I said, I'm doing sandwiches. So I'm going to go very thin. Let's cut through these first outer layers and see how we did here. Very nice. Smells awesome. Nice color. Wow, that is really, really good. And I like to keep the fat on, but if you want to cut it off, it's easy to do. So, let me get this whole thing sliced. It's still very hot, but it pulls apart with just a little bit of effort, which is what I want. Let's build that sandwich. Just make some room here on my cutting board. So I keep it traditional. This is some uh, fresh, soft Jewish rye. It's not toasted. Some spicy mustard. I like to go on both pieces of the bread. And now I'm gonna start layering this on here. This is the kind of sandwich where they pile it really high. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Woo, mama. That's hot. Here we go, put the top on. Little dill pickle. Let's cut this guy in half. And voila, how's that look? That looks amazing. A lot of hard work into this, but well worth it. Now let me have a bite of this. Oh yeah, that bread is nice and soggy now, sopping up all the juices. Here we go, guys. Mmm, that tastes like the real deal to me. I can't wait to finish this sandwich. Hey, if you like this video, Hit that subscribe button right there and definitely check out one of my other videos right there and I'll see you over there.